Hello, hello, check one, there we go. Okay. Hey everybody, uh, this nigga name is Kane, coming back here. Um, it is actually a Friday night. I don't really record on Friday nights, I usually record on Saturday mornings. Um, but I don't know if I'll be able to record tomorrow morning. So, I had something put into my heart, um, while I was playing my, my game here. I have, uh... NASCAR Heat 4 loaded up, and I was just kind of enjoying some free time while everybody was asleep so I could play. And I needed a drink of water. I was wondering what that thing was in the back of my... This right here is a... It's a fishing rod holder. I was wondering what the hell it was. Um, it's actually for posters. I bought it for storing posters because, you know, we have water in the basement. Anyways, long story short. Um... But I, uh, I was compelled to say something, you know, now, so that I would, because like I said, I don't know if I'll be able to do it tomorrow, because we have the granddaughter all day tomorrow, so I don't know if I'll be able to actually do anything, and while I was sitting here racing, which, this game, you know, when I'm racing, I, I actually have time to think, you know, especially for this, you're just driving around the circles, you know, and things just go through your mind, and you're just kind of like... Oh, well, that's that's an interesting thing to think of. And so while I was sitting here thinking, um, I was going through stuff of what I wanted to say for tomorrow. And um, there's a couple different things. Uh, but then it started turning. I was like, well, okay. I was In my head, I was like, okay, God, what do you want me to say? Because I can sit here and talk for two hours on numerology and, you know... Um, the biggest thing that came up in my mind was, uh, if anyone else remembers the Seattle, the the Russian kid that, that came up with the uh, the Seattle nuclear false flag attack, whatever it was, on 11-3, and nothing happened, well, the first thing I said was, well, we need to watch for 311 because the numbers work both ways. And... I was watching a video today from Shaking My Head Productions, and they had something on. Um, they usually take videos from other people and put them all together in one big thing. I think I, I said that before. But they had, somebody was doing a... What was the name of that one? I can't remember the name of that one. Jack Crown... I can't remember. It had Tom Hanks in it, where he goes back to college. I remember hearing about the movie, but I, I, I've never seen the movie, so I don't know. But inside of that movie, there were so many 311 hints, or 11 threes, and I, uh, I didn't know what it meant until later on in that video, they said that you know March 11th was when the WHO came out and said that the C virus was officially a pandemic. And I said, that's it. That's the 311. That's what happened. So it just was this, you know, this kind of spark in my head today. The, the whole day was kind of like that. I've had to pull away from doing any kind of conspiracy or video watching or just any. I, I had to pull away from it uh, for the past week because I've been getting so bogged down with it you just have to do that sometimes you have to just walk away from it and it's it's passover uh week it is the the feast of unleavened bread uh we had our passover it was small it wasn't very much um but we are in the middle of it right now you know week of unleavened bread uh some some people were saying that you know it's interesting that the passover happened to uh the original passover happened to be where you know they they put the blood of the lamb over their doorpost so that they wouldn't get hit and then as soon as they passed over they immediately had to leave and people have been saying well maybe you should leave your house you know like you should get out uh we didn't take that option i kind of start i'm starting to think maybe we should i don't know it's been kind of quiet from what I've heard, uh, different things that have been happening. Uh, there's still a lot of people talking about mand mandatory shots and people are talking about, you know, upping the curfews and you know, a lot of people getting arrested for really stupid crap and just, just the insanity outside in the world right now. is just getting ridiculous. But... <sighs> I 
I was led to not talk about that. I was led to talk about something else. Um, something that, that, like I said, it came into my brain and I, it was one of those moments where I've done it before where I was just compelled to put down my controller and just record this. So I'm recording this right now. Like I said, it's, it's 1030. It's Friday, uh, April the 10th. Um, you know, and I'm just, I'm just doing this off the top of my head. I have nothing planned, but I was compelled to do this. And what I want to talk to you about is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. If you don't believe this, if this is not for you, then you can, you can turn off the video. That's, that's fine with me. I, if I cannot reach you, I cannot reach you. I've, I've had to accept that. That's been one of the hardest pills I have had to swallow over the past three years of this journey that I've gone through is that some people just will not hear it. And even though I want to try to save as many people as possible, I can't. It's just not going to happen. So if this message is not for you, then I am sorry. Uh, move on. I wish you the best when you are ready to come to hear the word. You have to know that Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, he will be there to listen to you. His patience is everlasting. It is. And he waited 40 years for me to come to the truth. And I just for all of the for all of the terrible nonsense that I did in my life, for him to accept me and to turn my life around the way that it has turned around over the past three years has blown me away. Just I, I was the most despicable person in the world, and he chose to open my heart and let me see it. And it's a beautiful thing, and I'm starting to tear up. I'm sorry. It's true. It's, it's, it's a very emotional thing to talk about. But I want to talk to you about the sacrifice, because this is, we just had Passover, and we have this craptastically unbiblical holiday called Easter coming up in two days. Um, in the beginning of all this, because man sinned, because Adam sinned, God demanded a sacrifice. And it wasn't just, oh, hey, just kill a goat or, you know, kill a lamb. It was, you have to take a death. <clears throat> Sorry. You have to take a life in order to in order to take away from the sin that you had. Because what people I don't think understand is that a tr sacrifice, a true sacrifice is is you have to kill something innocent, something that had nothing to do with anything. Um, more than likely, you had to kill part of your flock. The worse your sin, the more of your flock you had to kill. You had to work and toil and, and do what you had to do to keep these animals alive. And in order to repay your sin, you had to kill one of these things. It was a true sacrifice that you had to do for this. And back then... That's what it was. It was your blood, sweat, and tears into something that you had that you could use, that you could trade, that you could barter, that mostly for food. Because back then, you had to remember there was only so many animals in the world. There were so many people in the world, you know, and this was basically you sacrificing that. Now, it did come to the point where you could eat the sacrifice. And that's understandable. That, that came as, a, you know as time went on. But the law, when the law came and, and gave all the laws and the, the laws of Moses, when they came, when they came around to the Israelites that fled from Egypt, a lot of those laws were, you know, for such and such a sin, you have to kill this. For such and such a sin, you kill that. Those laws were put there for them because God knew that these people were going to sin. And this was the, their way of repaying that. 
And again, like I said, there, there was an amount, there was a certain amount of animals that had to be killed for this. Um, I remember there was a part of the book, there's a part of one of the books where they said that they were killing so many animals. They had so much leftover meats and so much, you know, so, so many other, uh, so many of these animals were being killed at once whenever they reopened the temple, I think, or whenever they started the temple. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it got to the point to where the priest said, okay, we got to stop. This is just too much. You know, we got to stop. That was where they were there. It was, it was so bad that they were just absolutely slaughtering animals just back to back to back because their sin was so bad. And it got to that point to where the priests started changing the rules you know, it was it was always about it was always about having faith in God, and and following God's word, and being true to Him, and trying not to sin. It was it was never about oh I'm going to go sacrifice this animal. It's just going to flush everything away. It's it's the same way with with saying that if you drop a dollar into the collection cup, your sins are going to be washed away. You know, that's not what it's about at all. It's about having faith in God and trusting in Him and letting Him take it away from you, coming to Him with, with a solemn heart and being open about it and letting Him take it away from you. That's why when Jesus came, that's why He said, or that's why Jesus died for everyone's sin. Because at that point, there were no amounts of animals that could be killed to wash away the sins. Jesus Christ came in order so that he could be the perfect sacrifice. And he was. There's so many ways inside of the Bible where it explains how he... His life measured all of the Old Testament rules of what a perfect what a perfect lamb should be, um, what a perfect sacrifice he he should be, why he was sacrificed, why he had to die. Uh, if 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 people don't know why exactly he had to die, you're you're not really reading the book very well. One of the biggest reasons that he had to die was he when when he says he when he said. That he did not come to get rid of the law, but to fulfill it. He wasn't meaning that he was going to end the law, that that whenever whenever the law stopped, that was it. What he was saying was he was fulfilling the law. He was he was becoming that part of the law that needed to be filled. One of the ones that I always like to point out is that uh, one of the old laws was. Uh, if you blaspheme against God, you are to be stoned to death and then hung from a tree. You're basically crucified, hung from a tree until you're dead, pretty much. And that's what he did. The Pharisees, according to the law, thought that he was blaspheming against God. So they crucified him. He fulfilled that law. It just it's it's one of those amazing things whenever you actually read the book and read those parts of the the scriptures it's like he fulfilled that part of the law um the biggest part of the law i mean there's there's several others i i can't think of them right now cuz again i'm going way off the top of my head and it's late and my throat is getting really scratchy that's <laughs> demons trying to keep me from talking right One of the one of the biggest ones, the big one that I don't think a lot of people really understand is uh the law said that when when a wife becomes a widow or no what was that? when a wife becomes how do I want to put this?
if a woman is put away, like divorced, if a wife is put away and divorced for no reason at all, she becomes an adulterer or adulteress, I guess that's what it was. Uh, Moses made that law for the Israelites. God let Moses make the law for the Israelites that if you wanted to divorce a woman, you could give her a bill of divorcement and let her go because they were a hard neck people because they were a people that, you know, needed to have that because they were going to sin no matter what they did. But the law that happened from the very beginning that we don't get to know because there were many more books other than just the ones that we had way back before Abraham, you know, probably, you know, way up to Noah, there were, there was a law that said that if a man and a woman got married, he could not get rid of her unless she became a widower. Because if you got rid of her, she would be an adulteress because she would still be living, you know, with that marriage. I think there's a word play on that too. I really do. I think the whole adulteress thing is, um, if you, because, because your DNA changes when you have a kid between, between a man and a woman, when you have a kid together, both your, well, the woman's DNA changes. So that woman's DNA is part of that man's DNA. I think there's a word play in that, that we don't know, that we don't understand something spiritual that happens in there, but the word adulterous just got kind of put on top of it. But unless, unless the groom dies, unless the man dies, you know, she is considered an adulteress and she cannot be remarried. That's the law. That's the rule. That's, you know, that's the law. So this may blow your mind if you've never heard it before. Um, it blew my mind because I had never heard it before. Um, God constantly talks about his people being his bride. Um, Christ talks about his church being his bride. That's his bride, the bridegroom, the, 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 the 10 wives or the 10 maidens that go out into the wilderness and five of them have, you know, oil for the lamps and all that. And when they hear that the bridegroom is there, they go to meet their bridegroom, you know, the whole thing. It always talks about the bridegroom as you know god or christ and the wife is always the church or you know his people and one of the things god did was he came down in the flesh so that he could die he could literally die so that he could be separated from his church physically so that he could fulfill that law that says that a woman cannot be remarried unless the husband dies, unless she is a widower. And that's exactly what happened. Christ fulfilled that law so that the church would be able to be remarried when it comes back, when he comes back. Do you understand? See how that works? And... He fulfilled all these laws in order for us to be able to come back to him. In order for us to be able to come back to him clean and upholding the law in the best ways possible. It's, it's, it's a pretty amazing thing whenever you get down to it. But... The biggest thing that came out of it that I was thinking about was what I said at our uh, at our Passover. We didn't really have a feast. We ate we ate salads earlier in the day, and then we had the the communion. Is what it is. I don't like using the word communion because the Catholic Church has kind of ruined that. But that's what it is. It's it's communion. It's, it's the breaking of bread. I guess we can call it that. The breaking of bread and the drinking of of the wine or grape juice, however you want to do it, however you think it is. Um, but when I when I was thinking about stuff to say, because last year when we did this, I went through the whole thing about how Moses and the Exodus and the Passover and the 
plagues and yada, 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 you know, I went through the whole spiel and Angie got really tired of that really quick. So I said, okay, this year I need to find something that pulls that in a little bit, reins it in. And I found something and I never really thought about it this way, but it was a really good, really good thing. I wish I could remember where I heard it from, but, um, when Jesus sat down with his disciples for the last supper, he broke the bread and he said, eat this for it is my flesh. Now I've always had a problem with that. And other people I've known have had a problem with that too. Is What does that mean? Eat your flesh. What are we cannibals? Cannibals against the law. So no, 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 no. Jesus was the word made flesh. Jesus was the word, the, the, the word of this, the word of God. Jesus was the word made flesh. When you take of the flesh of Jesus, you are taking of the word. You are accepting the word that is in here. Whether you want to believe that's the law or whether you just want to believe that it's the word of God, it's the understanding. That's up to you. But that, you are taking that into you. That's what that was. That's what that meant. You are accepting the word into your body. And when he said, drink of this wine, for it is my blood, I always used to joke about that being some kind of weird vampirism. It's not vampirism. That is you accepting the blood that he spilt on your behalf because he was the sacrifice. There is also something else that I can't think of right now. One of the other laws was that uh, it, was, it was one of the other, the, the older laws. I can't remember. Somebody was, was talking about it, how when he talks about his cup runneth over, uh, there was some kind of something where, when a woman when a when a woman was was thought to be an adulteress or something like that her husband's cup would be filled or so i don't remember exactly what it was some kind of weird thing like that um and in order to in order to take that away from her. The cup had to be physically taken away from her or something. I don't remember what it was. I wish I could remember what it was. I'm so sorry. I don't remember. I heard it once in passing and I wish I would have written it down, but I, I don't remember what it is now, but it was, uh, it had to do with that. The cup runneth over and it had to do something with the, with, uh, Jesus going up to God right before he died and saying, if I could, if I could take, if you could take this cup away from me or something like that, it was, it was something along those lines, but that's part of, of, of sharing that cup of wine, sharing the blood is in it. That, that was a part of that as well. You're accepting the blood that he is spilling on, on your behalf. He is the perfect sacrifice to take away the sins for everyone. Because he was the perfect lamb, and he was the husband that had to die in order that the wife can be made fresh, to be made whole, um, to not be an adulteress. Now, the church is falling into whoredom, and... That is a problem. We understand that. He talks about that as well. Is is the church taught you know being called a whore, uh, and that's the whore that will not be married. He's looking for the fresh virgin that would that he can marry into. That's that's us in a way. Is we accept his proposal. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. He he washes us with our blood, and we accept that, and we have to be reborn clean. That's the baptism. We have to be reborn clean as a virgin, spiritually, so that we can accept the proposal 
as a clean virgin, away from the adulterous life that we had in order to be perfect for him. You see how this works? It's, it's such a it's a it's it's a it's an amazing story when you really sit down and think about it and when you know the back end of it. You know, there's other guys that explain this in way better ways than I can. <clears throat> But that's, that's the best way that I can explain it, is, is he took that away from us so that we could come back clean, so that he could accept us back into his family. You get it? And it's, I think that's what he wanted me to say right now. Uh, for the past 26 minutes is he wanted me to tell you that that is open to you. That proposal is open to you. If you choose to accept that, he will take you back. He's already died. He's already died. All we have to do is accept it and ask to be washed clean of, of this, this world, this, this world that wants nothing more than to just make whores of us all. That's, that's what he wants. It's a spiritual thing. It's not a physical thing. It's not a, it's not a literal thing. It is a spiritual thing. It's, it's not, we're not, we're not literally being born again. This is, this is where, uh, this is where Nicodemus comes in. Um, Nicodemus asked Christ, you know, how, how can, can someone really go back into their mother's womb? How does rebirth work? I find it amazing that I am sitting here explaining this, you know, because I chose the moniker Nicodemus. I just, it blows my mind sometimes. It really does. Uh, but that's how it works. I mean, that's, that's how it works. You have to be reborn clean as a virgin in order to be taken back because he wants to marry his bride. He wants to have that relationship with his bride and he wants his bride to be clean. And it's open for everybody. That option is available to everyone that will accept it. If you choose not to accept it, that is on you. That's not many people will accept it. There are, many are called, but few are chosen. I I have been called, but I I may I may screw that up. I may have already screwed it up. I don't know. I'm I'm trying my best to clean myself as much as possible. Um, I I think I did a fair job. <laughs> <laughs> this year, it wasn't perfect <laughs> trying to unleaven myself. We didn't unleaven any of the food in the house because of the current circumstances. We need the food. I'm not eating it, even though I just found out today that some potato chips that I ate last or I ate yesterday have uh, yeast extract in it, and I feel like total dog crap. I'm like son of a bitch. I didn't. I didn't even know because I didn't even think about looking because potato chips are supposed to be just you know. Potatoes and oil and, you know, all the other bull crap that they put in it. It's not supposed to have yeast extract in it. So I've already screwed up my unleavened bread. But I don't think that's what it's for anymore. I think that's part of the, part of the ritual. It's part of the sacrifice because it's, it's a cleansing ritual. The, getting the yeast out of your body, yeast is the, the lowest of the you know, organic organi organisms that we take into our bodies. It's not the best in the world for us to have in our system. It's a cleansing ritual. At least that's the way I think it is. You know, it's, it's a good way to cleanse. We usually wind up eating a lot of vegetables and a lot of other stuff during this time, like we did last year. Last year, I lost like 10 pounds. It was amazing. Um, and man, unleavened bread is the most awesome stuff ever. Uh, it's, I, if I just eat unleavened bread for the rest of my life, I'll be happy. You know, just like pita bread. It's cool. 
but it's not only that it's you are unleavening you are unleavening your life of sin and last year even though it was after the fact I threw out all of that porn. I talked about this before. I've I've had a porn problem for a while. I threw out tons upon tons of crap that I didn't need. This year, I dumped holidays. Easter, Halloween, Christmas. I got rid of the Christmas trees. I threw out the Christmas trees. I threw out my grandmother's. Christmas tree from like the 1960s, that old thing that was falling apart that I only really brought out, you know, maybe once every so other year or so just to hang up in the corner because it wouldn't stand up on its own. I threw them out. I threw out my mom's hundred dollar, you know, six foot Christmas tree that she gave us a couple years back because I'm not celebrating anymore. <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore. I threw away our, our Halloween, you know, any any Halloween thing that I could find, I, I bet you there's probably still stuff that I can find that I could throw away. I didn't I didn't clean as much as I should have, but I've had a rough week. <laughs> Man, I've had a rough week. It's been such a rough week. My mom's in the hospital. I just found out my dad is he's got problems. Been rough for me. But I have I have lowered my head and humbly prayed every day. And I have been reading the book. I didn't read the book this morning because I just I I I needed to clear my head. And been rough, you know. Not only that, but, you know, the current situation, things that are happening. <sighs> we are not meant to live in fear. Uh, sometimes I have fear, and I have to start praying more to uh, take that away from me. I just, I, I, I pray that whatever the next step will be that I need to take, he will show it to me. That's the that's the biggest concern I have right now because I have nowhere to go. Uh, when things start happening, when they start going do do door to door and asking us to take tests and you know hurting us into into school buses, I don't know where to go. So I'm hoping and I'm praying that He will show me and tell me the right time to do it because I, I have to take care of my house. I have to take care of my family. I have to stay here until it's trade and until it's time to leave. So what else do I have? Yeah. Other than that, that's really all I have, guys. I just I didn't want to make it long. I just I was compelled to get on and talk. Um if anyone watched through all this, I, I'm sure I probably screwed something up. I'm sure I probably sound like a complete babbling moron. I don't think I... I, I it sounded right <laughs> to me. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not perfect at this. I admit that 100%. I'm not perfect at this. I don't have the I don't have the word. You know, I don't have it word for word memorized. I'm still learning. You know, I, I know the general ideas of a lot of things. And I'm able to point out some things, but not everything. But I ask for that wisdom, that understanding every day as well. You know, forgiveness, wisdom, and understanding. And now it's, you know, just tell me where to go, when to go, so that I can go. You know, that's that's what I pray. That's what I've prayed for every day for the past three years. Just tell me, tell me, tell me what it, what you mean, what your word is, what you want me to do, how you want me to do it. And he's given it to me. I've learned so much. But I think more than anything, he told me to get on here and just tell you that Jesus will accept you. He's already died for you. All you have to do is, is accept his proposal so that when he comes back, and it may be soon, it may be another hundred years, I don't know. 
But when he comes back, he will wake you up. He will wake you up and take you. I think that's that's the most beautiful thing of all. <laughs> he, will, he will wake you up and take you. Any of you pray? Pray for my mother and my father. They're not doing well. Pray for my uh pray for my grandmother. She's she's at that house all by herself and she constantly worries sick about the C virus nonsense. Pray for us all. Forgive those that are doing this to us because they don't. They chose to believe the lie. Pray for all those people that are choosing to believe the lies that they are giving us. They don't know any better. You know, you got people in California that are snitching on each other. The line was literally, you know, You've heard you've heard that snitches get stitches. Well, now snitches get rewards. That was literally a line that somebody said. Pray for those that that forgive those that do this to us. They don't know any better. Pray for those that don't know any better that are falling for it because they're just not going to believe. They're just not going to believe. I I was one of those. I was absolutely one of those people. I I was. I I had a spirituality. I just didn't know where to where to throw it. You know, I considered myself a Buddhist Hindu. You know, just as long as I didn't screw with anyone else, I could just live my life and be happy. Whatever. And I had a calmness to myself. You know, I didn't I didn't understand all this. But he showed me. He showed me the lies. And it took 10 years to, to slowly but surely show me the lies. And then it's like it, it snowballed right into a, to a point. And then I just kind of snapped, snapped out of this reality. And I just kind of said, it's, it's, it's real. You know, it's real. He's real. God is real. Jesus Christ is real. <laughs> And it's taken me three years since that point to, to get to this point to where I can really believe and really understand what it means to have faith. And, and I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not a hundred percent there. You know, it, I'm still growing every day, so I'm not perfect. So don't, don't think that I'm just some, you know, I'm some preacher or some, you know, Bible thumper on a, on a head trip on YouTube. I'm not, I'm just some guy. I'm just some guy that just happened to see it. You know, I, <laughs> I just happened to see it and I just have to, I have to tell somebody else. And hopefully if I tell my story, somebody else will hear it. And somebody else will associate my story, you know, they can see their story and my story, and they can begin to grow and, and heal from this place. This place will kill you. Without a doubt, this place will kill you. And I don't want that for anybody. I, I don't want that for anybody. I need to stop. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it if you made it this far. Thank you. Pray for each other and and keep vigilant. Keep your eyes open. I don't know where it goes. I don't know where it goes. It's like I said, I don't... It could happen tomorrow. It could happen down the line. I don't know. But stay focused. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there.
You guys take care. God bless you all. Stay safe. And I will, uh, I'll see you whenever. If I record one tomorrow morning, I record one tomorrow morning. I don't know. We'll see. You guys take care.